I often get questions about the signal flow and routing within the LV1 system and there seems to be a bit of confusion about this. So uh, I think I can clear things up because it's actually quite simple. So let's have a look. All right, so I often use the analogy of water. So let's imagine that audio is water. Yes, I always carry one of these. Let's imagine that audio is coming out of uh, this instrument or this vocal. So the audio is pouring into the channels. So at the top here we have all the channels and raising a fader on the console it's like turning on the water on that channel or turning on the audio on that channel uh, letting it pour down from the channels to the next layer which is the groups. So at the right here we can see that after all of the channels we have the groups. Channels at the top then groups. Next layer after the groups are the effect channels so raising the faders or turning on the water from the groups pours the audio into the effect channels. So after the effects we have the monitors as the, the next layer. Then off the monitors we have the masters, so the left, right, center and mono. And at the bottom we have the matrices. And keeping with the water analogy, if you pour water into the channels, it will then pour down to the groups, to the effects, monitors, left, right and matrices. And because of gravity it can only go downstream, not upstream. And it's the exact same thing with the LV1 system. You cannot send the monitors to a channel or a, a matrix to the uh, groups. Uh, you can only send downstream. However, since version 15 you can change the order of the groups and the effect channels. So you can place groups after the effect channels. But the same principle still applies. If you take a group and place it after the effects, you cannot send that group to an effect because that would be sending things upstream and you can only send downstream. All right, so that's the signal flow, but there's one more thing that seems to be a bit uh, confusing and that's the effects and monitor sends. So at first glance, you would draw the conclusion that you have uh, eight effect sends and 16 monitor sends because that's how they are labeled. After the groups we have 8 effects and then 16 monitor sends. But I would suggest thinking of it as 24 auxes. And these auxes can be used as effect sends, as monitor sends or even as groups. And I think the reason Waves has labeled these as effects and monitors is that if you want to send an effect to a monitor, you would need that effect to be upstream from the monitor send. So it makes sense to first have all of the effect sends and then the monitor sends. But it's actually just auxes. And if we take a look at the all page, you can see that uh, this principle applies here, except for one confusing thing. For some reason, Waves have, pl have placed the main and monitor section uh, to the right. To me, it would make more sense to just switch this around because the main and monitor section comes before the matrices. So they should actually just switch places. Okay, so let's have a look at a typical uh, signal flow that I use. So here we have uh, a snare drum coming in on channel 5 and 6. It's uh, two mics on the same snare drum. So let's send these to group, say group 4. This one and this one. So now if we raise the, the faders, we, no, these ones, we will send these channels to group 4. We will then, of course, have some reverbs. 
So let's go to group four and send this one to aux five, where I have a reverb. So now if we raise the fader on the snare group containing both of the snare mics, we will send this signal to the uh, effect five, where we have the reverb. So let's turn this up. Uh, from here right now, this signal isn't going anywhere. So what I typically do is I have the four last auxes uh, used as groups. So uh, aux 13 is my drum group, then my uh, instrument group, group for backing vocals and lead vocals. So in order to have this going to my drum group, that is uh, aux 13, we need to send it to this one. Now we're sending unity level from from a group to uh, aux 13. And let's do the same thing on the reverb. To aux 13. And now we can see that we have signal coming into aux 13, that's our drum group. If we turn down the snare drum group, there's nothing going to uh, the drum group. So let's keep this up. And then we need to send this group to the left right. So let's go into here and send this to left right. And raising the fader, we can see that we have signal come into the left right. I would then send the left right to a matrix for distribution to the speakers. So let's go into the left right and send this to matrix one. And when raising the fader, we have signal going into matrix one. And raising the fader on the matrix one would result in actual sound. <laughs> And it does. Perfect. You could of course send the channel directly to left right and have that feeding the speakers but where's the fun in that? All right so hopefully this clears things up a bit and if you have any questions let me know. Take care.